Uh, I want to say good afternoon, to <laughs> bro. This is this is overdue, man. Yeah, I know. Trying to get it get it in for a while. Oh wow, a long time. Gasto, bro. Love for having me, man. Nah, bro. Love for you coming through, man. It's um, for me, it's like, like I'm a Christian, and I've always found this walk within the industry kind of challenging. Mm. You know, like I've never like if I go to church, I can't really explain. You never know, used to always talk to you about like um. What was that? What was that? That DVD that they had when they talked about how the circular industry and it's like everyone was like, smashing. oh yeah, um, truth behind hip hop. Yeah, like all these yeah. things like spooky new, but um, had to go home and burn all your Jay Z CDs. Oh, oh my gosh, it was it was it was political. But I want to talk to you a bit about actually when you first came. Let's talk about when you first came to Christ. Like, how old were you when you? Uh, well, I grew up in church because my my family went church, but I was probably around sixteen when my mum didn't really force me to go no more so I had to make the decision do I want to take this seriously or is it just something that I just do on the side because if it's something that's just a side thing then I'm just gonna bounce um but my youth leader was pretty cool man so he just used to talk to me about like God faith what it looks like to be like young and a Christian and that kind of stuff and yeah I messed with it so yeah I just kind of stayed in church and it went from there really that's when I started to develop my own my own faith yeah when you at a young age, what was your peers or like people at school or college? How did they take to it? Do you know what's mad, yeah? Everyone, because a lot of us were like African, Caribbean, and obviously faith is quite often in those communities a big part of culture, a big part of your upbringing. So everyone like had faith to a certain extent, but when it came to you actually like living it out, that's when men start looking at you funny, you get me? But for me, it never really made sense because, see, if I was like a... I said, yeah, like, I'm, I'm really about it on these roads, yeah. And then I get G-checked, and then the man them clock, I'm not really about it. Like, people will be talking, oh, he's a fake, whatever. So when it came to faith, the fact that I was actually trying to, like, do the right thing, and people were looking at me sideways, it was always baffling to me. Um, but I've always been, like, quite a strong character, so I didn't really mind, like, you know what I'm saying? So for me, when I was around 16, 17, that was a time when peer pressure was a lot. It was like... Going trocadero, linking girls, and I think that mindset of always trying to live a Christian life yeah. was more challenging being so young. Hundred, yeah. I struggled with that, man. I was living like a double life for the longest. Cause you know that whole like angel on one side, devil on the other. I had both. So when I was in church or when I was with people that were like minded, I was like, Yeah, man, I really want to be a good guy. I really want to like um just be the best me that I can be. But when I'm with the man, them, I'm like, I'm a human being. Do you get me? Like, I'm a cold-blooded like man. So the stuff that everyone struggles with, that's the stuff that's going to be appealing to me as well. So I was always treading the line. But you see the same way you got man, them saying, like, we're on this. I had a couple strong individuals that went to my sixth form. Um, one of them is Nick Brewer, one of my boys. Yeah, so he's a Christian. A lot of people don't know. But I remember in sixth form, we went to, like, some party, yeah. And I did a thing with a girl, yeah. And then the morning after, he bailed me. And he was like, fam, you're meant to be doing this, like, thing for real. What's wrong with you, yeah? And the way he chatted to me, I was like, rah. Like, he's right, you know? But, um, yeah, I always had people that, that like that in my life that could encourage me and get me back on the right path. Yeah, actually, I remember Nick Brewer. Like, I mean, he used to be sound, he was on an island for a... He was at an island for a few years, yeah. And he had, he, he had a nice little sync for one of his songs. Um, Talk to me. Yeah, I think that was top 10 or top 20 or something yeah that's cool though man like to have someone like that in your life to actually yeah bro the people around you are very important i always say let's say i didn't grow up in church or let's say i was just around man that weren't really on trying to be the best that they could be my life probably would have panned out different so yeah influences are, are super important i've just been grateful and blessed that i've had some good influences around me you know what i'm saying yeah, and the natural thing is that when when did you know that you actually wanted to do music as a career? Uh, I don't think I ever did, you know. Like, I used to spit in school in a playground, just clashing and stuff. And more often than not, I was quite good. So I started to record songs, put them on MySpace. And just people in my school and my area used to mess with it. And then um, this is how I fed into being known for being like a, a Christian artist or a gospel artist. So my youth leader at church heard one of my tunes on MySpace and I was like effing this, effing that. Then he was like, bro, like, 
why don't you try and record a song or an EP for your youth group? So I said, all right, cool. Started doing it. But because he told me to do it, I was just putting Jesus in everything, bruv. Like, even when I didn't fully believe it. Um, so I put an album out, did a launch, but like a thousand people turned up to the launch party. And then, bro, it was like, there was no going back, in it. So, yeah, that's just what I started spitting about, bruv. But if I weren't influenced to do that, I probably would have still, like, been a Christian. But my music would have been a bit more... Like, uh, is he? Is he not? He's positive. Do you get me? Because I feel like as soon as you say that like, gospel rapper, there's already a barrier there, and people think, oh, it's gonna be like this when, when it's not like that at all. So yeah, man. I think from like 14, 15, I was spitting, and then just never really looked back. The the the, the gospel rapper tag. Um, in what way, if at all, do you feel it's kind of like created roadblocks? Yeah. Or um. Or even opportunities. I feel like it's definitely set me apart, which has been a, a good thing. Because I've always said, like, regardless of what people call me, I'm just going to try and make the best music I can make. And if I go to a set, be the best bit of there. So my thing is undeniable. You can say, like, you don't agree with it or it's corny, whatever, but you can't say that I'm not good, you get me? So I think it's created opportunities because if someone needs, like, a bit of positivity, that like, you can go, like, George the Poet, Akala, Governor B. Like, there's not loads of man, you get me? But in terms of roadblocks, yeah, it's just, I remember one time, I can't even say the radio station, but they wanted me to do like something in Cardiff and they heard the tune and they were like, yeah, this is sick, yeah, come and perform. And then the MD of the station was like, he Googled me or something. He was like, oh, no, man, like, there's people from like different faiths and that kind of stuff. We don't want to put anyone off. So then they cancelled on me. But I was like, bro, like you heard the tune, the tune's come. And I'm not really going on the, you know, the man at Oxford Circus and that turn or burn and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I think people just stereotype it. But I feel like there's a lot of people that deal with stereotypes. If you're a draw artist, everyone's going to think that you just, like you're a murderer or you're a gangbanger or whatever. That might not be everything that your life's about, you get me? So yeah, man, it's just a stereotype like anything else. But I haven't allowed it to, just to not help me move forward. I've just tried to make the best of it. But in the moment when that when that happens, when it's almost like the highs of this is an opportunity to like oh no 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 it's it's taken away. Mm. Um, who do you go to in terms of like reconcile? Do you, do you pray? Do you go to your who 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 around you helps you get through those moments? Do you know, it's my my mum. Obviously, praying that's just like standard for me. But my mum always taught me to be grateful for everything in life. Like she come from Ghana, her and my dad to England to create a better life. They had to do two jobs, you get me? I get, bro, like, I get to spit for a living, like, have a car that I want to drive, mortgage, all that kind of stuff. If I don't get playlisted on radio, I've already done sick, you get me? So she's just taught me to be grateful regardless of what knockdowns you get. And don't get me wrong, I'm a human, so when I get the knockbacks, I'm pissed, like, upset, angry. But ultimately, when I go to bed, I know if I'm like, man, it is blessed, bro, you get me? So, yeah, Mumsy just instilled that from a young age. Yeah, that's actually interesting because I wouldn't have... It, I guess when you go down a certain path, it, not saying it shatters your beliefs, but you're thinking, okay, it's just music. Mm. If the music's good, you'll get on radio, but if that can be potentially the mindset of an MD, then you'll probably understand why other things yeah. may not open up Hundreds. for you on an equal level. Yeah, well, you can be the best, bro. Hustle every day of your life and still not get certain looks because there's so many different factors that go into into that. So I've just learned to be the best I can be and see what happens, bro. I know nothing in life's guaranteed. Life don't owe me nothing. Um, and it's cool to be upset or whatever, but the next day we just keep it moving, man. Yeah. I listened. My mum actually used to, she used to do um, some, she used to be at Premier, mm. like just doing and volunteering. And you all, you're always on premiere. Like you're, uh, you, radio station, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How, how, how much of a support system has Premier Radio been for you over the years? Yeah, it's been wavy, man. Because if you're a Christian artist, that's like your, your Radio 1, do you get me? And then Premier Gospel is like your one extra. So they're championing you from early doors. And I met someone the other day, um, just on road randomly. He was like, yeah, I listened to you like years ago, you get me? And... You were like, for a Christian in school, you was like one of the only guys that we could play to demand them, you get me? So, yeah, I think radio stations like Premier, they just help amplify my sound and, and get me to, to people's ears. So, yeah, it's been sick. When's music been full-time for you? Like... 
from like 23 so i graduated like 22 i used to work in the o2 phone shop in Bromford, big up the o2 phone shop um and then i've always played it safe a little bit to get me but then people kept coming in the shop recognizing me and that and then my manager was like all right what do you do and then i used to tell him and that um and then bro one day i was just looking at my like my paycheck not my paycheck but my bank account at the end of the month and I was thinking, like, this don't happen every month, but I reckon if I take the jump, like, I could live off music. Like, I'm still at Mumsy's at the time, I'm giving her, like, a little rent, but it's nothing too major. Like, let me just take the jump, bro. And then I did it and never really looked back, man. How difficult is it, though? Because, like, I've been self-employed for a good number of years and, mm. bro, there's the, the ups and the downs. It, yeah. It creates anxiety. Yeah, 100. But I genuinely believe, yeah, like, a lot of the people read the Bible like a storybook and that, yeah? And I'm like, bro, if I'm going to, like, put my my life on the line for my faith, almost, I'm going to have to believe what it says, bro. I'm not doing it half-hearted. So when it says the Lord will provide, fam, I've seen that, like, to get me. I've seen, like, May, June, July getting mad pee from bookings and then September, everything dried up till December. But somehow, the bills are still getting paid. It don't even make sense, bro. But I just believe that obviously you have to apply wisdom to a certain extent. But if I'm exactly in the position that God wants to, me to be in, then he ain't going to let me starve. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think it's easy because like, when you're on this path when it's like there's no security, you your your testimony is actually amplified. Like There's times where it's like there's no money. Then it's, It sounds cliche and then, like an opportunity will come and be like, I didn't even How? see. Yeah. yeah, it's mad, bro. But also the bloodline I'm coming from, I'm coming from parents that, basically came from nothing and made it happen for themselves. Do you know what I'm saying? So my life is a lot easier than my parents. So these risks that I'm taking now, I'm going to go for it, bro, because I've seen it modelled and, and they've succeeded. I said to you before we started about, um, I feel like an artist like you could be on a major um, label. Um, would you entertain it in the future? If you have any reservations? Like, How do you see the, yeah. the major label system in terms of an artist like yourself? I just think that when it comes down to the music, the main reason that I would go down that avenue is because I think it sends a strong message to youths like me, even if you're not a Christian, but if you're different and you want to spit about something positive, you haven't got to be like the typical, stereotypical like rapper that's chatting about girls, drugs, gang banging, that kind of stuff. You don't have to like change your content whatsoever and you can get a major record deal, blood. Like... I think for me, if I signed, it would be about what it represents, what I represent. I never had to change up my sound. I was just me and it happened. And that's going to inspire. You see what them youths, bro, that think, ah, oh, to make it as a rapper, I've got to spit about this and that. Yeah, yeah. That's who it's going to send the message to. But in terms of like me individually as an artist, I just haven't needed it. Like I've signed deals that are like it, but I've kept my masters and my rights and that kind of stuff. But yeah, I've been blessed and I've been doing this for 10 years, bro. I'm not going to say I've always been in this mind state because when I started, probably for about five, six years, I need a deal, blood. If I get a deal, it'll be sick, you get me. But I've That's had right, friends. Was, when Nick got signed, did you have that feeling as well? Yeah, we've always had like a friendly competitiveness. So when he got signed, I was happy, yeah. But I was like, man, has been grinding, you know, <laughs> you get me. Um, but equally, I've had quite a few friends that have had deals and it's not always all it's cracked up to be there's been like quite a few success stories but you don't see all the stories that didn't work to get me all the people that had deals but um it didn't go the way that it was meant to go so i don't know man i'm just a guy that counts my blessings bro like i'm happy to control everything that i do and be able to make decisions that i want to make but if it did happen i think it would be sick just for everyone says for the culture but or signpost or signpost things but yeah i mean it sounds cliche everyone talks about now about masters and ownership but for you why is that important for you to retain all your masters and ownership of your music because i know who i am man i know the message i want to bring um and it's not a message that can be watered down or compromised or inauthentic so if i am in control of the vision that god's given me i can make sure that the authenticity stays and that's why it's important to have an element of control. Um, and I'm not saying that I can't find like the perfect team at a label that would get that. But yeah, this is a safe, safe way for me to do what I do. 
I think also that same token is like, not that you don't want to be the guinea pig, but you don't want to be the one that they, they test it on and it doesn't work out and then yeah. Yeah. it messes up your situation going yeah. forward. Now things are different though, a bit, because like you got Kendrick or Chance or Stormzy talking about faith and stuff. So it's not as big of a barrier as it's always been. But yeah, I think ownership is important where possible. Right, just popped to my head. How does how does playlisting work for you on Spotify then? Do you always find yourself grouped into categories where you're able to get into like Yeah, things are changed, you know. I think like if you actually listen to my music, like if it popped up on one extra or on Spotify or whatever in like a playlist. It's still fixed. Yeah, you're not thinking, right, this is mad different. Because I'm not saying like Jesus, Jesus in every land. I'm just talking about real stuff from a different perspective. But yeah, I haven't had any problems with like the one extras, the Capital extras, the Spotify's, it's still in the Who We Be's and the Rap UK's and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I just concentrate on making good music, man. The stuff that inspires the music, we can have a one-on-one conversation or I'll see you in the street and we can chat or there's certain songs that might touch on that. But yeah, in terms of my artistry, it's just good music. Okay, now when you get to where you are, and, I'm, and we are going to deep dive into the album, but when you get to where you are now, like, when you reflect on the last 10 years, like, how do you summarise this this musical journey that you've been on? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I think the first maybe five, six years, I was heavily conditioned by Christian culture, yeah. So if you're a Christian, you can't collaborate with people who aren't Christians. You can't um, talk about anything other than Jesus. You're just, do you know what I'm saying? And I think we're all conditioned in some way, shape or form. When I got a bit older, I was like, but this don't feel natural to me, bro. Like, obviously my faith is, it shapes my worldview, but I want to talk about girls from my perspective. I want to talk about drugs from my perspective, violence from my perspective, all these different issues that face young people in the ends. Do you know what I'm saying? I want to put a positive spin in it or whatever. So yeah, I kind of came into my own a little bit um, and was more confident with not just doing stuff that church tells us to do and we don't even know why we're doing it do you get me and then um probably like eight years nine years down the line my dad passed away and then it's like I lost all my fear do you know what I'm saying like it's like I thought I don't feel like being this positive Christian guy that everyone expects me to be because that's not my reality I'm in pain right now I'm hurting and that's what I want to spit about um And I think when you lose someone that's close to you, it puts things into perspective and you realise what's really important. And when my dad passed away, I thought the most important thing is being true to who I am. And that's just not in if I'm at set with some grime MCs or some drill man or whatever. That's if I'm in church and not feeling what the pastor's saying. Do you get me? Um, So, yeah, I think it's just been a journey of me continuously, like, getting in touch with, like, who Governor B is. Mm. Bro, when you have such a detrimental loss, Mm. does... Do you still want to make music at that point? Do you still... I mean, the cliche thing is the whys, you know, but, like, how did it affect everything around you? Like, yeah. relationships, music, faith, how did it affect you? It affected everything, because I've lost, like, my grandma, my granddad, but because they're in Ghana, there's, like, an element of distance there. My dad was, like, the first one that was, like, super close. So it affected my marriage. Like, I was just getting angry for no reason. Um, I'm a social drinker, but I don't drink like that. You get me? I was drinking like every night. Um, in terms of my music, I weren't really on making music because I know people had this expectation of me and I didn't want to rap about, about that stuff. So I was writing bars, but it weren't really for people to hear. It was just expressing my emotions, but it affected everything. My faith, because I was like, God, I don't really feel like you're here for me now. I, it don't make sense because my dad left with like no warning. You get me? Um, and I just didn't want to be like this this good guy, this nice guy that everyone expected me to be. But the thing that really changed things was I just started to be real. I started to pray like angry prayers, like, God, why have you done this and all that stuff? Like, I'm angry at you, that kind of stuff. Um, I started to put out music that represented how I was feeling at the time, regardless of how people took it. I was just like unapologetically me. And I think that journey gave me freedom, bro. And if, if I'm honest, if I suppress my feelings, and just was the person that everyone expected me to be, I don't think I would be in a healthy mind state right now. So, yeah, I'm glad I just let loose, man. There is a... You said condition before, you know. Well, I think when, you, when you're when you within the church environment or religious settings, it's almost like if this happens, this mm. is the circumference of how you're meant to behave. Yeah. And as you're saying, like, 
sometimes you don't want to, you, you don't feel comfortable within that space. But when you, I won't say when you're when you were rebelling, but when you were exercising more freedom, how did people around you in terms of like who had the more religious yeah mindset? How did they view you yeah. expressing that? Yeah, I my, I kept my circle quite tight around that time, um, but I think in general people just said the stuff that everyone says in it that like christian or not like oh, that's gonna be all right like things will get back to normal soon that kind of stuff they mean well but i know deep down that's not that's not the truth you're just saying that because you want to try and say something nice but yeah. things ain't gonna get back to normal like it's gonna be different now do you know what i'm saying but the people around me just recognized that i was acting out of character um and it wasn't me but they knew i had to go through that journey so they were closely watching me kind of let me do my own thing but when it was time to step in, they say, yo, like, they're going too far or, yo, man, you need to chill out or, yo, come out, let's go munch or something. Um, but I just think that that situation revealed true things about my character that hadn't been unearthed yet. Because, bro, it's easy to be, like, this good guy when life's cool, you get me? But when it's really, like, hitting the fan, like, who are you then? And I found out that I was an angry person, I was this, I was that. So, yeah, man, it taught me a lot about myself. Um, revealed the ugly parts of myself and I think that's enabled me to move forward because I've recognised that. I mean, not, not, not on a touchy subject, when you say it reveals stuff, but it, it reveals something whilst you're married, mm-hmm. like, how does your wife, like, it's showing, not new characters, but it's showing a, a variation of a character that surely she hasn't yeah. dealt with. Like, how did you guys somewhat reconcile the yeah. changes? It's tough, man. Like, and obviously when you lose someone, everyone's always thinking about you they're not thinking about the people around you that it affects. So it was mad tough for her as well. Um, I heard this one thing the other day, like when you get married, you're not marrying like the person standing in front of you, like you're marrying whoever they're going to turn into because you're always learning, bro. You're always changing. Like even you now, you're not the person you was five years ago. Do you get me? So you're getting married with faith, bro, that like whoever you turn into, I'm going to stick by you. And obviously she recognised something about me that this big life event has completely changed who this person is and she chose to stick by me and now I'm I won't say I'm completely out the other side but we're over the worst of it and it was flipping hard bro but um did you fear for your marriage at that point at all see with my girl yeah the reason why I don't fear so when I look into her eyes blood like I know she's down you get me like I know we can be through go through whatever not a, lot, not a lot of people feel that when they're with their partners. I, I just get this feeling, bro. I'm not saying that's an excuse for me to act up or whatever, but I just know if I keep trying to do right by you, whatever we go through, like, you're down, though. You're really, really down. So yeah, I didn't really fear for my marriage, you know? I just knew whatever we go through, we're going to make it through. Yeah, like, and you have the song on the album, almost a dedication to, for her. Yeah, you, yeah. Actually, let's quickly get into that, see if we'll just segue into that, like... Um, Tell me a bit about the studio session and when you penned it. So that song, um, I had my first child um, about 10 months ago and I was just feeling mad blessed. He hadn't come at the time, but I was thinking, right, man's a big man with a family, you know? And my wife, he stuck by me. And at the time when my dad passed away, I wasn't looking like a year ahead, two years ahead. I was just trying to get through every single day. So, um, yeah, I just had the, the baby scan on my phone and I was looking at it just feeling gassed and blessed and that's just how the song came out bro i wrote it it was proper quick man because it was just me giving the thanks and uh, that she's still here so yeah and well, what's it what, how does she react to it when she first hears it uh i can't even remember her first reaction she probably gassed <laughs> yeah just like laughing or crying or something like that yeah um, but i ran a couple of tunes about her so she's used to that she's used to that treatment now <laughs> <laughs> Uh, trust me need to cut her in on the publishing (laughs) but that's that's i mean because one thing i like for me i've me personally is being on this path like and yet to be married it's like i talk to my friends that are married they're like look marriage it's not a joke it's it's not not a joke joke, it's it's not it's not not a joke it's not a joke young men being married who know another side of life yeah but then they say to that they say look bro i'll be honest how it is out here is a mad, it's mad. Bro, I just think, yeah, life in general is not a joke, yeah? yeah? I could be out on these streets, dozens of girls, different girl every night, whatever. That might sound appealing, but there's going to be hard times that come with that, bruv. 
you feel like no one's really really down for you you ain't got that one person or whatever or you're out here who loves you who's who's there for the peas whatever you got marriage on the other hand you might be arguing with wifey losing loved ones and it's putting tension on the marriage but at the end of the day the pro is you got someone that's committed and down so it's just not pick your poison but which path do you want bro like nothing's going to be easy and for me i've just looked at marriage and through my worldview and think I just want to build a family, be loyal to one woman and just build something with someone. And that's going to be difficult to do. It's not going to be all like flowers, but that's the path that I've chosen. And bro, the blessings far outweigh the tough times, fam. Like far. Another cliche thing is how is it married into a different culture? Yeah. How do you find that? And were your, were, were your family all supportive yeah. of, of that? So, so my missus is English, yeah? She's white. She's like quarter Scottish or something like that. I don't know. Um, my mum, when she first met her, my mum's always been like, I want you to get married to a Ghanaian girl, yeah? My mum's a mum's, innit? Yeah. So first it was like, oh, That's what they know it is. Yeah. yeah. But even I did, I was dating a Ghanaian girl and then she went, she was like from the north. So she was like, oh, nah, she has to be from my village and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so she'll always say something. Um, but I bought wife for you home and then she like offered to do the washing up or something like that. And then from there, my mom just loved that blood. It was that easy. She was like, ah, she offered to wash the plate. She's a good girl. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's always been good. But I think the culture thing, it's been difficult because as I've grown up, I've got more and more um, in touch with how important it is to embrace. I think it comes with its challenges, but I'm the kind of person that's never going to shy away from embracing my blackness. And yeah, I think that's made our relationship work. If I was with someone that didn't really nah man but like we're all equal and all you know what i'm saying it would be tough but she's not like that so we look at it as a positive because she has an opportunity to learn i have an opportunity to teach and also we've got a, a mixed race son and i think that she's even more invested now than she was before because that mixed race son by the world he's going to be perceived as a, a black person you know what i'm saying so yeah man um i'm just grateful that i'm with someone that is open to learning and just encourages me and champions me in like she's a true ally you know what i'm saying yeah um for your your son right yeah how does father how does father change you she gives me another another reason to be better man if i'm having a down day or if i'm feeling like giving up or if i'm feeling like I'm not the man that i need to be rather than sulking i look in his eyes and i feel like he relies on me he trusts in me and I have to be the best that I can be. I think about my dad and his dad. I wouldn't be here. I'm here because the shoulders, I'm on the shoulders of giants, you know what I'm saying? So I can't stop the progression in my family tree. I have to keep it going. You know, every single generation has to be better equipped to survive in the world that we're living in. And so he just gives me added purpose, man. For me... Um, everyone nowhere is like has been my favorite album this year. Sick, bro. Appreciate that, man. It's it's been between you and T E Dennis. Okay. The album. Obviously, I I worked on Cadet's album, so that's more sentimental. But mm. in terms of like what I got from the music. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, being more within like working behind the scenes now, I was actually I'm super impressed. Love, like, man. And I said to you, I said to you, I was like, bro, do you think this is your best? Yeah. <laughs> I think it is, man. The last, the one before this, Hands Are Made For Working, is more sentimental because it's about my dad. But in terms of musicality, I'm really, really happy with this ha- album, man. And that means a lot, bro. Thank you, man. Also, I think a lot of things that people don't realise is sequencing. Mm-mm-mm. This has been sequenced well. Yeah, 100. It's, it's like, yeah, I, 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 like, like, I think, well, my mum loves Travis Green. He's <laughs> my favourite, so. Yeah, he's a bad boy still. That there. Like, so musical, man. Must have like, given you chills making that record. No, nah, I loved it. That's That song is, yeah, it's a special song for me, man. Because that was birthed out of a lot of pain, do you know what I'm saying? And I was thinking everything that I've been through, man's still standing. And obviously Travis Green, like, absolute legend like, in America, gospel music world, Rhett, Free 2, Ezra Collective, Barney. Like, I don't know, man. It just felt, like, complete, do you know what I'm saying? No, it's, 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 it's beautiful. Um... And then another thing we did speak about, about um, within the Christian faith, not even Christian faith, within the religious part of Christianity, um, 
it's not always what it seems. And when you highlight some of those things, which is quite brave in music, um, now what made you actually want to not be unapologetic, but just be really like, shoot from the hip. This is the inconsistency. This is what I've seen. This is what I've experienced. Yeah. But you still brought it back to like, I've seen the good that Christianity's done for people, homeless people, and this and the third light. But what, what made you think? Are you talking about um, Safe Place? Yeah. Where... Yeah, that's a good question. I just think that church shouldn't be above critique. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we can't just push all the good stuff that church can do and then sweep all the, the damaging stuff under the carpet. Um, I have never liked that. When I became a Christian, it was like, yeah, sick, God's amazing, but no one told me life's still going to be hard, though, or no one told me that people in church are still imperfect. So if people are listening to me thinking, rah, this faith thing has changed governor's life, like, I want to explore it. I can't let them, man, explore it without telling them, actually, like, there's some challenges that come with it as well. Um, and, yeah, man, I just thought I had to be straight up and unapologetic and... Uh, the church might have been able to do that like generation before but with this generation we've got so much access to information we're so real we're so like unfiltered that we just want the realness man just be honest and authentic and yeah that's what i tried to do with the music does that song raise um does it ruffle feathers yeah i think it ruffles feathers because no one likes challenge or critique but who yeah. cares, man? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it's what it is, bro. Like, and I'll this I've been it's doing this for, yeah. But I've been loyal and and doing this for ten plus years, you know. So I think I'm qualified in a sense to just be honest with with what I think. Mm. Yeah, like, yeah. When I listened to, it, I said to you, like, I, I wasn't even aware of some of the things there, mm. um, and there's articulation is always a thing. Um, but for me, I found that like a lot of the times people do can hide behind a religious setup, yeah, and their flaws are sometimes protected. And again, it's almost like turning a blind eye to certain things. Yeah, but like I said, I think this generation is like, look, man, yeah, they're calling everything out. Yeah, and but I'm inspired, like. One thing I want to have with my artistry is like longevity. And I was chatting to you about this earlier, like a legacy. And I feel like artists that achieve that, you know, your, your Kirk Franklins, like your Kano's, your, your Rich Free Twos, they're just unapologetic and authentic in everything they do. And I just think that whatever stage of life I'm at, it's going to come out in the music. I can't just make stuff that's going to, like this is a radio hit or this is, because the artists that I actually admire, they don't do that, bro. You can just tell when you listen to the music that it's coming from here. And like you can't beat that, man. So I'm just not about riding waves and saying what people are meant to say and that kind of stuff. It's just got to be real. No, I agree. I think I'm, I'm, I'm all for that because it allows, it opens up the conversation that needs to be had. Mm. You know, a lot of the times that like, being from a like, Yoruba and like, me being from a Nigerian settings, it's almost like never challenge yeah. your elders. Yeah. Even if they're wrong, you just accept and it's like that doesn't make sense even if they're wrong yeah don't yeah. speak don't say anything to them that's disrespect it's like that's bondage and we're not supposed to be in any time yeah exactly life. that's not how i'm gonna parent man I'm, i want to be able to like apologize to my son and i want him to be able to challenge me to be a better person and i feel like even when you're talking about faith if god's this big great thing that that we think he is then why wouldn't we be able to come to him with our questions and our doubts you know when this, how many? When did you first start everywhere I know it? When did you start actually recording it? Uh, it was like the 9th of January, two thousand and nineteen. It was the first studio session. I was just like, I want to be creative, man. Um, let's record something. And then the first song we did. What was the first tune we did on the album? Bittersweet, I think it was. And then it just started hitting. And then I got the concept of everywhere and nowhere of like feeling like you've achieved a lot, but you're not really anywhere at the same time. And feeling like the loved ones you've lost are, are far away and they've gone, but everything around you still reminds you of them. And then, yeah, it just started flowing, bro. When you're reaching out for features, how does it, how do you reach out to Rich? Is there a relationship with their Travis Green? Travis Green? Yeah, so we.
brother on socials for years, met him quite a few times. We were both sponsored by Adidas around the time, same time, did some stuff together, like Adidas parties, all that kind of stuff. And he just always show man love. And with him, he's selective, innit? Mm-hmm. So I was like, yo, Rich is the OG, man. So I'm not going to him for a feature, like, because if you clock, you don't do features with everyone, bro. But the song Fall On Me, as soon as I heard it, I was writing a third verse, then I was like, nah, this is for Rich, bro. I just know it's for Rich. So I sent him a tune. I sent him a voice note. And I was like, bruv, I know you don't do tunes like that, bruv, but this one's for you, trust me. So he heard it and he loved it. Sent back his vocals like the next week. So yeah, it just happened like that, man. I like how you think a bit of your cadence as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. bro, that, that tune, man, is one of my, probably definitely top five that I've ever done, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it means a lot to me, bro. Especially the year that we've had, you get me? Yeah, yeah. Um, and what Wretch is spitting about, yeah, special. Nah, that's great. And then Travis Green. Travis Green, one of my boys, lives out in America and he does a lot of work with Travis. Travis, man said Travis, you know. Um, and then he heard the song and said, yo, like, hard. Wait, so who actually produ- who, who produced the, the record? Um, my producer, Jimmy James. So I worked with him on pretty much all of my albums. He produced like my first hit, which is Kingdom Skank, like back in the day. Yeah, and then yeah. still... Yeah, still producing for me now, but he's a bad boy. Is that, is that live instrumentation or is it just, is it programmed? Yeah, um, we had some live keys on there. We had live bass on You Never Let Go as well. Coleman's actually produced with Jimmy on Fall On Me, the Wretch song. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because of the background that I've had in like growing up on like Motown, gospel music, live instrumentation is always part of the, the albums, man. Yeah, because I think the production, that one, it, that one stood out. Yeah. It felt so rich. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all about the music, man. He's got to make you feel something. Exactly. So then you send it over to him. He Does he still want to get on it or? Yeah, he just texts me straight away saying, yo, it's hard. Let's do it. Uh, I didn't have to like, this album was weird, bro. There weren't no like, like, oh, do a song with me, please, please, please. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think I'm a, in a different frame of mind. I would just send something out and then if you like it, hop on. If not, on to the next one. So, so it's really as collaborative, not just. Yeah. And it's birthed out of relationship as well. I'm not really into like, oh, you're hot right now. Let me shout you. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's like, I know you, you're a cool guy. Check this out, so. Well, okay, look, so 10 years in the game. What what, what, what are the lessons you've learned now? Lessons? Um, good question. you got to know who you are, man. Mm-hmm. You know, I've definitely seen a difference in how people respond to me because I walk in meetings now and I know my mission. I know my goal. I know that I am meant to inspire people through music. And not just Christians, but anyone that needs inspiration and positivity. So when you sit in that chair and they're like, oh, yeah, we could do this. And then I'm like, no, this is my vision. People just treat me differently now. Because even if it's not for them, we know what he's about. If it is for them, we know what he's about. So before I was too, ah, let's do a tune like this. Then we'll get on radio. Let's chat to that person because he's the gatekeeper here and that stuff. I'm like, no, like it has to be about the music. And it has to be about being the best that you can be. So even if it's not for people, they can't say it's not good or they can't say like, nah, like it's got to be undeniable. Um, and yeah, I just think I know who I am now, man. But it's taken a while to get there. I'm 30 now, so um, it's a struggle and I'm constantly evolving. So I think the most important lesson is to yeah, just know who you are. Otherwise, you know what it's like. People have their opinions. You go left and you go right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you did say that um, in that line about you didn't think you was going to have your own yard. Like yeah, they, yeah, hundred. And when when thirty creeps up, man, life becomes very real. It does. I always say twenties is like you know, the practice. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's the stuff on the line, but not as much on the line. Thirty, you're like, okay, like I remember, bro. It was like I was like twenty eight, and it just hit me that you see the daily decisions in my twenties. They have got me here, bro. And this is the person that I am. So in my thirties, bro, I can't just take life as it comes I've got to be intentional about my days and work on stuff that that really inspires me and be the person that I want to be otherwise I'm going to wake up and be 40 and in the same position people think you just arrive and then you've, you've changed and you're the best you can be but it's like what have you done today bro? what are you doing tomorrow those daily decisions that's what what counts you get me yeah and I think also culturally but see in a way you kind of like take some of the boxes off married child Mm. Uh, like culturally, yeah, by yeah, thirty, you should have this, this, and this. But do you feel like 
No, no, I won't say do you feel unaccomplished, but do you feel like you've maximised all of your opportunities within your 20 to get to where you are now? Yeah, and even all those things like mortgage, wife, kid, they weren't boxes that I had on my list because I've always been a firm believer in like, who says that's what we're going to aim for? Who says that's what life's got to be about? It just so happened that the way my life panned out, I met someone that I loved and um, I was able to buy a yard, whatever. Like, But it wasn't like the be or the end all. The most important thing was what God got me on earth to do. He's got me on earth to inspire the youths, bro, like through the music. And whatever comes off the back of that comes off the back of it. Um, and the mortgage, bro, having a mortgage is another headache as well. People think yeah. having a mortgage is like, the house is paid for in total. Like, nah, man. Unless it's another commitment. Unless they got Amory Don piece where they can just <laughs> put the whole thing down. No mortgage cash. Um, but yeah, like Diddy says, isn't it? More money, more problems. Like, but bro, like, it's just money. It's just, it's just, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but there's more important things in life, man. Like these things that we look to, to validate us. I'm grateful, don't get me wrong. But looking in the mirror, what's my character like? What kind of person am I? How do I treat other people? Like, mumsy's at yard, like, is she good? Like, is she patterned? Does she know that I'm here for her if she needs me? And that kind of stuff. That's that's what I'm on, man. And that's the stuff that's important. I do think when you have a career objective, it doesn't always qualify to self-development. So yeah. you have people saying, like, I want to have this, this, and this, mm. but they're not getting more emotionally Facts. intelligent. Yeah, 100%. And it hides all the... Like, if you're someone who's like, Timekeeping is not the best. Mm. If you're successful, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. I was thinking this year, like a couple of months ago, like work was good, the album was popping off, like we was on playlists and all that kind of stuff. And then I had an argument with wifey, yeah. It wasn't even a big one. But then I was just driving thinking, rah, like, on the one hand, life is sick. But if my house is not in order, bro, then am I really successful? Do you know what I mean? So sometimes I get it backwards. But really, it's got to be like, wifey's good, son's good, fam's good then music's all right, do you know what I'm saying? Even if music's not going great, the stuff that's really important is good. And that's what makes me successful in my eyes. I was going to say, do you, think, do you think it's somewhat stereotypically a man thing where we just, I, we, the goal is position, mm. well, not, not, not that, but it's like, that checklist is like, okay, well, I did something now. Whereas... Yeah, 100. Yeah, I don't know, we just got something inside us, a lot of us anyway, that... We need work or success or money or things to validate us. Maybe it's because that's what the world looks at and thinks symbolizes this person is doing well. Um, but yeah, constant reminder, character over everything, man. You know what I'm saying? For men who are single, um, like what, what, what did you when? It's gonna sound When did you know? You say that you know your your your, your girl, your wife has you yet, but when did you like? really know like what what brought that yeah. that certainty i always tell people in any situation that you you don't really know whether you're coming or going you have to look for the peace and whenever i was with her i felt peaceful whenever i thought about our future together i felt peaceful that's not to say we don't have our ups and downs but i just can't get away from that feeling of peace it's like if you're going to sign a deal or something i don't know there's just something there bruv where you just know, you can't explain it, but you know, this is not right, or this one's right, do you know what I'm saying? And yeah, when I was just with her, I just felt like the peace, bro. And no I have to listen to it. I think naturally, I'm not going to say all guys, but forever is a long time to be happy, bro. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Forever is a long time to, to commit to someone. So I think there's always going to be doubts, but they always, the peace always overrides that, man. Do you oh, know what I'm right. saying? I have doubts on a lot of things that I do, though. A lot of good situations that I'm in, a lot of things that are good for me. Do you know what I mean? Like, all right. I'm... So that's probably more of your character then. As yeah, that's my to character, yeah. 100. It's like, with faith, oh, if I live my life and then God's not real. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a doubt. But I know that ultimately the peace of God being by my side every day and me feeling that outweighs that. Or well, wifey, I feel like she's the one, man. But oh, it's forever. That's a long time, you know what I'm saying? 50, 60 years is not a joke, lad. <laughs> But the peace overrides that. So, yeah, I just always look for the peace, man. Yeah. And then for you then, do you, outside of religion, wifey, son, is, mm. is music your peace? Or what, what, what is peace for you as an individual then? Yeah. And it's not attached to people or religion. That's a good question. I think music's my voice, man. Like, it's hard to explain, but I know that 
when I see uh, a young person or anyone in general struggling or needing an answer or needing some positivity, I can help them by offering them my music because it's what I've been blessed to do. When I'm in the studio recording, I feel completely at home. And yeah, it's just my voice, man. And I think everyone has something that they can use to express themselves, like whether it's, I don't know, drawing or like sport or music, counting, whatever it is. And music is just my thing. When you're making a... a... Do you, see, do you classify your project as an album or it's not? Yeah, album, okay, yeah. Definitely. It doesn't really matter these days. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but when do you know it's complete? When do you st- Is it that you had all the tracks and you cut them down, but when did you know, I'm not recording anymore for this? Yeah. And who sets the deadlines? Because I'm trying to keep artists the deadlines. And it's, yeah. It's mad. So I'm with um, like a label services company called The Orchard and we agreed that my album would be ready for like an April release so that was like the light deadline but I probably finished it in November because I was looking at what I wanted to speak about I wanted to speak about loss and grief and how we navigate that I wanted to speak into like youth violence and how we cannot see each other as enemies and the causes of youth violence and how we can't just look at that on surface level and think oh it's because your dad went at yard or it's because you had bad friends and that but it's a lot deeper than than all of that stuff I wanted to talk about grace and truth. So, like, uh, Governor, a lot of people ask me, what do you think about, like, when a mainstream artist chats about faith and then in the next song they're chatting about guns and that? I'm like, on the one hand, like, it's sick, but the truth of the matter is we're all on a journey and we should be trying to get better on that journey. Like, I wanted to talk about these different issues and I wanted to talk about family life and that kind of stuff. And I was just listening to that album and I thought I've, I've spoken about all of this stuff and I was trying to record new songs to add... But it just didn't work, man. And yeah, I just thought, yeah, I've spoke about everything and now, and now it's done. And then when it's done, what's your process and your process to knowing? Well, who do you go through for feedback? Is it yeah. you, management, wifey, Bredgens? How does it work out? So uh, one of my friends, Nick, Nick Brewer, Barney Artist, and I have one of my good friends, a guy called Jordan. So another one of my good friends. They're like my free, what do you think of this? And then other than that, it's just... I know, like, I don't need, not in a big-headed way, <laughs> but, like, I, I don't need too much feedback on, I like this, I like, this is what I like. Do you know what I mean? If I was the only person on this earth, this is what I would listen to. And not that what anyone else thinks doesn't matter, but, yeah, it's just, I'm happy, you know what I'm saying? I think it does take time to get to that kind of level of assuredness with your musical, because, obviously, I think first time you make music is like do people like it then you put another song do they like it like the last one and then yeah then they start comparing you to your previous work and, yeah, yeah 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 i think life's a journey and i'm at a stage where a lot's happened do you know what i mean and for me my dad passing away was a catalyst for me like being unapologetically me but i've definitely struggled um in earlier years and on and off now being confident in who i am and the music that i make so I think people shouldn't put pressure on themselves to like be completely 100% confident because I'm only at this stage now because 10 years, different experiences. So just embrace the journey, but just remember that you're enough, man. And there's not an opinion in the world that matters more than your own about yourself. So, True. yeah. For you, have you found this journey in music thus far? Is it, have, you, have you found it worth it? Yeah. If you're talking to like my accountant, he'll probably say no, isn't it? Because if you look at the time and the effort and the money that I've put into it, right. I'm definitely not up. Like, mm-hmm. I've had a good couple of years, but if you talk about like 11, 12 years, yeah. I'm not up. But when you talk about getting an email saying, yo, I heard the song with Rich and I've been self-harming for six years. And I heard that song and I was like, no, nah, I'm worth something. I'm not going to do that again. Then of course it's worth it, bro. Like, for me, that's it. Like if that's all I get, that one that one person, then hundred because you've just saved the life is a is a big shout, but you've just helped someone on a journey. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. Like I can't take anything with me, my car, my house, even my family. But I can leave you like the music, and if that can help you, then yeah, man, it's worth it. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing because it does it does like there are moments like I've had a good few years. Mm. But I sit back and say, like, oh, if I stayed in finance, though. Yeah, trust oh, me. It's like, it's, and I think, I think not, not that it weighs heavy, but like I said to you, I, 
the anxiety of like like literally you are on faith like there's mm-hmm. like if someone looks and says okay cool you can't bro you can't see mm-hmm. it like mm-hmm. wherever the, where the money comes from be like <laughs> yeah and navigating and that's and that's another thing I wanted to actually explore quickly like navigating a relationship mm-hmm. than a marriage in uh <laughs> in an industry where income fluctuates like where how were you secure in the fact that you can yeah you can you that. can move into that prov- if, even if the provider role is even the role you have to sit on but like how did you feel like I can do this have a career so yeah like I'm trying not to give you like airy fairy answers, man. But I come from concrete, man. Like mm. if you're from the ends, you just know how to make it happen, bro. Like if you've seen the way your family, if you're a first generation Brit, yeah. have made it happen from not like my parents come to this country with a, a general plan to make stuff work, but they landed and they just had to get everything, bro, from scratch, mm. and then to see what they've done that's in my DNA bro like to just make it work so if you couple that with my faith knowing that God's always got my back yeah. wifey probably don't know like what goes through my head of like the warrior next month's looking a bit tough or blah 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 but what she does know is like we're gonna make it work bro yeah. and yeah I just think that you've got I've just got that in me man and it helps me move how do you see this in terms of like adding towards your legacy though and do you know what you want your legacy and music to be um, spoken of? Yeah, that's a big question. I just want to be seen or... Yeah, I want people to view me as someone that didn't fold. Like, they didn't switch up. They didn't change who they were, but they kept it 100, 100 throughout their whole career and changed the perception of what faith-based music is. You know what I mean? It's not just something that sits in a, a gospel box, but... Ah, oh, look, he won a Mercury Award or he done this or he impacted these people and they had different backgrounds to him and that kind of stuff. So just someone that changed the face of what black music, hip hop music, rap music, grand music looks like in our country, man. Um, yeah, I want to be like a career defining artist. Yeah, just the way I look at like Kurt Franklin think, raw like you're just like a, a choir boy. But then you're in the studio with Chance and Kendrick and everyone knows who you are and but you're still you to get me and they have to respect it. Um that's one of my biggest inspirations. Or you can look at like a Kano and be like, rah, you've like glowed up, like you was chatting about this, you've clearly gone through a journey, and now you're inspiring the youths and spitting about it and you're hev- highly respected. Like, I don't know, man. I look at people like that and think, yeah, that's what legacy is, man. And yeah, I just wanna be remembered as someone that kept it one hundred and inspired people through the music. When you look towards certain people, mm. so like you've always been in the peripheral views, like oh, Governor yeah. B, Governor B, like Governor B, Governor B, and I think as you said, like you probably, it's hard to know the people you touch until you come until they actually mm. communicate with you. Like even for me, I don't know when people say, "Oh, I've been what I thinking, but I can't show my face. I don't, I don't, I don't get it." Yeah, and you start to realize. But I think for you, bro, like do you? I hope you understand that your flowers are there, bro. Do you get it? Like, yeah, no, it's not. Because it's not it's not easy to understand. Mm-hmm. You're just you. you. You wake up to be you every day. We don't realise how what you do yeah, affects it. affects people's lives, man. Love, man. Yeah, no, it's it's not always easy to see because just with the music I make, what I stand for. No people know, but they don't want to show that they know. Do you get me? Yeah. Um but yeah, that's good to hear, man, hundred percent. Yeah, I know sometimes get, I don't know if it is, but sometimes you can you can feel overlooked. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know. That's a lot of us. I yeah. don't think I'm special in that way. Like whether you're an Afrobeat artist or whatever, like you can feel overlooked in any situation. So I just know that, yeah, there's certain things in life that are universal and we just got to keep doing what we do, man, and just be grateful for the opportunities that do come. Why did you name the album Everywhere Nowhere? Uh, I went to like a, uh, what's the place called in Central? They do that bare like art galleries and that. I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, I found out about uh, a photographer called Vivian Mayer. He took like hundreds, thousands of pictures, but never got them developed. And she passed away. But the guy that took over her studio found the pictures, got them developed, and the pictures were sick. And then she just become this famous photographer. But it was after she had died, innit? So I thought, right, she's actually nowhere to be seen right now. But her talent, her gift is, is everywhere. And I wrote it because even with me personally, what we were just talking about, I might never never get fully appreciated or you might, ne- might never get fully appreciated but the art that we put out into the world 
that's going to be there forever. Do you get me? Uh, so even when you feel like you're nowhere, like you're everywhere, it's calm.